All right, so looking at ethers. So ethers is a functional group where it has oxygen and two other carbons on either side. Now those carbons can be any length. They can be cyclical, they can be benzene rings. Um, it really can be anything, any carbon, carbon, oxygen in the middle, okay? So as I mentioned, the two groups can be the same. So I can have R being the same, let's say a methyl and a methyl, or they can be different. I can have a methyl and a cyclopropyl. So they can be um, different types of carbon groups, okay? Now, it's important to note, right, the oxygen, ooh, not so great, but the uh, oxygen has the two lone pairs around the center. So when you are drawing ethers, really, it's a bent shape around the oxygen itself, or V-shape, same thing, right? In terms of properties, so ethers are polar structures, right? So we do have dipoles that are on that carbon-oxygen bond, okay? So we have dipole-dipole and we have London dispersion. Um, however, depending on the size of the carbon groups that are on that ether, you can actually have a really varying degree of um, different properties. So I'll explain what I mean a little bit more in depth. So let's say on this ether, I have, you know, a methyl and an ethyl, okay? This is relatively small. So meaning the dipoles that are on this structure are actually impactful. So this would be considered, of course, this is polar, but in terms of um, how this molecule will behave, it will behave like a polar molecule would. So it would be able to dissolve in water, it would have a relatively higher um, melting and boiling point and all the same properties you would expect. However, if you have an ether and you have uh, you know, a very long chain of carbons, even if one side is long and one side isn't, the more hydrocarbon areas you have, the less of an impact that these dipoles have on the overall molecule. So meaning, it's almost like you have a polar section, but because the majority of this molecule is nonpolar, yes, yeah, so if I were to ask you on paper, is this molecule polar or not? The answer is, it is polar. It does have dipole-dipole, but how this ether would actually behave would be more like a nonpolar molecule. So meaning, this would not have uh, an easy time dissolving in water. And of course, the uh, more you have, you know, let's say this is now, you know, a cyclo uh, pentene and more carbons, the more hydrocarbon areas you have, the less polar it's going to actually behave. So that's why this point down here, so ethers are soluble in both polar and nonpolar. It really depends on the size of the molecule. So you're looking at that large hydrocarbon region, you know, is it essentially um, big enough that it's going to have a, a nonpolar effect on the overall molecule? Okay, so generally, if you have a molecule, I'd say less than four carbons, you probably sit, tend to see a more polar behavior. Uh, larger carbon structures, right, for ethers, you will probably have a more nonpolar behavior. So ethers are essentially, it's saying, well, how much of that is that dipole being felt in the overall structure? Okay, so let's talk about how to name these. So as you've already noticed, every uh, functional group has a different type of naming system. Um, but in general, they kind of follow along the same lines. So for ethers, the, um, the ending actually is an oxy ending. Now, this is a little bit different because ethers are not part of your parent group. They're actually named as if they are a special type of branch. So um, the parent name will actually be whatever the name is of the, of the longest carbon chain. And then the ether is typically named as a branch off of that chain. So I'll show you what I mean. So first of all, you're going to identify which one is your parent. So the parent chain is the side of the oxygen that has more carbons typically, okay? So here we have a little, a simple one. So we have two versus three. 
So in this case, the parent, the oxygen is here, it's kind of hard to see. So you have uh, the parent being propane. So really this, uh, maybe I'll use a different color here. This is our ether branch. So you want to start counting on this propane closest to where this um, ether is. So it's on carbon number two. So normally this would be an ethyl group, right? So ethyl meaning we have the two carbon branch. But because this is a, an ether branch, we have the ethyl and it's separated from propane with the oxygen there. It's not going to be ethyl, but it's actually going to be ethoxy. So the OXY ending basically indicates that in between the branch and the parent, there's an oxygen molecule or atom found there. So here, so you have ethane, so it's an ethyl branch, so it's now going to be ethoxy. So when you're numbering it, you would number it the same way you would any other branch. So two ethoxy propane. So notice the, um, the ether is nothing to do with the parent. It's actually named as if it's a branch, okay? So um, be mindful that um, the number, when you're looking at the number that's in this, the number sometimes will be associated with the branch or with the location on the parent chain. It really depends on the size of this um, ether or this ethoxy um, branch. So ethyl does not need a number, just like methyl does not need a number, right? Um, even propyl, you don't really need a number because if it was in the second carbon, you can say isopropyl or isopropoxy. Uh, so in this case, the two is indicating essentially where on this propane is that ethyl group. So just be mindful when you're looking at the number to consider what is that representing. So maybe we'll do another example here. Let's say we had, um, let's say we had a cyclo. Why not? These are not carbons, this is like one. Okay, so here I have my oxygen, I have a cyclopentane, and I have an isopropyl branch. So this is going to be my parent, right, cyclopentane. And I actually don't even need a number for this because whenever there is a cyclo and there's only one branch, it's assumed to be number one. So here I have an iso propyl, but instead of isopropyl, I'm going to say isopropoxy. So this oxy portion is saying, okay, in between the isopropyl and this parent, I have an oxygen as a separator. Okay, uh, there'll be more later on that you can practice with. So uh, just a note, sometimes ethers can go by an alternate name. Um, this that I'm going to go through here really only applies when you have the exact same um, structure on either side. Okay, so here I have, here's my oxygen, we have an, an uh, ethyl and another ethyl. So the IUPAC name for this would be ethoxyethane. So meaning you have ethane, there's an oxygen, and then another ethyl group. But... Uh, another common, name, common naming system for ethers could be essentially you say diethyl, so di whatever the branch is, and then ether indicates there's an oxygen separating the two. So both of these would be acceptable. You should be able to, if I give you the name in this format, you should be able to identify or draw the uh, structure for this. Okay, so give this a try. So we have, um, yeah, so pause the video and give this one a try. Oh, shoot, I already gave you a, um, I already gave you an isopropyl. Ooh, how about we just do this? So imagine this is a 2, CH3. Okay, give that one a try. Okay, so we're going to have to change up our names here. So the parent, ignore these. So the parent is benzene, right? For sure, benzene is our parent. 
Now this, I made this into, instead of this being an isopropyl, I made this into an S-butyl. So we have one, two, three, four, right? So this would be S-butoxy benzene, or you can say two, so one, two, three, four, you can say two butoxy benzene. So you can number this or you can use their, um, the branch name that's specific for propyl and, ben and uh, butyl anyways. But when you're doing this, it's important to note that the only reason why you can associate a number with it, this number two, is because it's already assumed that you're on this um, benzene that this is carbon number one, okay? Now, in terms of priorities, let me should go through this. So let's say we had a chain, and here I had an OH group, and here I had a methoxy. <clears throat> in terms of numbering, you want to still, your OH is still going to take priority, okay? I will let you know once we actually hit um, a functional group that will overtake um, the hydroxyl. But remember that this has hydrogen bonding, our ether does not. So ether is still kind of down on the totem pole of priority here. So if you have, and even if you had multiple things, right? So yeah, sure, here's a bromine. You would still start counting on the parent. What did I do here? Oh, I did a nine. <laughs> Okay, you would still start counting closest to this OH group, okay? So let's go through this. So five, we have a bromo. Six, we have a methoxy. So it's a methyl group, but there's an oxygen there. So you still go in alpha order. Okay, so we're going to have five, bromo, uh, six, methoxy, and then we would have two, non-anol. So it's nonane, but it's non-anol. It just sounds sounds weird to me because uh, we don't really see too many, and uh, we don't really do too many nine example alcohols, but there you have it. So the point of this really was, right, your priority is still OH when you're counting from the parent, if you happen to have that. Um, and then we have here our ether. So just remember the branch ending is oxy. Okay, so give this a try. Draw this out. So we have two, three, five trimethoxyhexane. So when you're doing this, uh, let's see if I can do this. So two, three, five trimethoxy. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. So on carbon two, we have a methoxy. On carbon, was it three? Three. We have another methoxy and carbon five. So one, two, three, four, five. We have another methoxy. So same deal as before. If you have multiples of the exact same branch, you add in the prefix. So dimethoxy, trimethoxy, tetramethoxy, whatever the branch, it's kind of like follows the same thing as other branching um, rules or systems. Okay, so there's really only one reaction associated with ethers, and that's known as a dehydration reaction. So remember, this kind of name goes with any time you are removing a water from a molecule. So what happens is if you have two alcohols, how we actually produce an ether is if you have two alcohols that are reacting, the products are your ether and a resulting water. So just a simple one here for you to see. So here are my two alcohols. It doesn't matter what the size is, but one of the OH groups will be completely gone. The H from the second OH group, this is what forms our water. And then what happens is the oxygen where the hydrogen was removed will basically link up to where the carbon, uh, where the OH was removed. So this carbon requires a bond, so does this oxygen. And that is essentially where the link up for the ether will go. So again, so it's also known as elimination, right? Just means you're removing atoms, dehydration, we're removing a water.